If you've ever had the pleasure of cleaning out a rain gutter, you know exactly how much gunk can get stuck up there over time. Well, this might surprise you, but computer fans are very similar. You would be absolutely disgusted to see some of the stuff I've pulled out of people's computers in the past, especially if they own pets. It's like keeping a Furby inside your computer. If the idea of growing your very own cousin it inside your computer gives you the heebie-jeebies, then I would suggest cleaning out the fan. Hi, I'm MJ with iFixit, and today I'm going to show you how to clean and replace the fan in a late 2010 MacBook Air. If you own a 2011 version of this computer, the process is remarkably similar. But, of course, you're going to want to follow the step-by-step -step instructions in the repair guide on our site when you're doing your repair. Before I can get started, I'm going to get all of my parts and tools together. For this repair, I'm going to need a plastic spudger, a T5 Torx driver, and a MacBook Air Penelope driver. Now, rather than using separate drivers, I'm just going to use our 54-piece bit driver kit because it has both the bits I'm going to need plus a ton more. I'm also going to use an anti-static wrist strap to protect my MacBook Air from any accidental electrostatic discharge during my repair, and a screw tray because it keeps all those teeny tiny screws nice and organized. Now I've got all of my parts and tools together, I can get started by taking out the 10 penelope screws that are holding the bottom case in place. Now that I've got all of those screws out, I can begin to remove the lower case by grabbing it right between the display assembly and the lower case and rotating it towards the front of the computer. Now that the lower case is removed, the very first thing we're going to do is disconnect the battery. And really, that should be the first step in any electronics repair because we don't want any residual electricity floating around in there while we're doing our repair. To disconnect it, we're going to grab the little pull tab and pull it out parallel to the logic board. You don't want to pull up vertically because that'll break the connector. Now that the battery is disconnected, I can disconnect the I.O. board cable, and for that, I'm going to use my spudger. Now that the I.O. board cable is disconnected, we have access to the fan cable that's connected via this teeny tiny little ZIF socket. I'm going to use the pointy end of my spudger to flip up the flap on the ZIF socket and then pull that cable right out. Now that the fan cable is disconnected, we can begin to unstick the gasket off of the fan. It's held in place by some adhesive, so all you need to do is, is gently lift it up and off. Now we have access to the three screws that are holding the fan in place, so I'll go ahead and remove those. Okay, now that the fan is completely disconnected, it should lift out pretty easily. And if all you're going to do is clean the fan, now is the fun part. Maybe you've got some canned compressed air on hand, or maybe you have one of our fancy rocket ship blowers. In either case, you're going to use your air and shoot it into the fan and dislodge any dust bunnies that are in the fan, and shoot it into the area that the fan was placed in, including the little vent, making sure to get all the tiny dust particles out. And of course, if you're going to replace your fan, now is the time to install your fan and reassemble your computer. Of course, you can find all of the parts and tools used for this and many other repairs at ifixit.com. And if you run into any problems during your repairs, there are lots of solutions in the MacBook Air Repair Guide on our site. If you want to stay up to date with all of the latest teardowns and repair videos, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter at ifixit, or like us on Facebook. Thanks for watching, and happy repairing!